All right, hey guys, let's re let's grade our chapter eight math review together. Okay, let's go over these vocab words. Um, I'm gonna link composite and prime together. Talk about those, I'm trying to get my pen working. There we go, okay. Composite, what is a composite number? Yes, it means it has more than two factors, so a number that can be divided by anything more than one in itself. So, for example, 10. It can be 1 and 10, 2 and 5. That would be composite. Versus prime is a number that's only divisible by 1 in itself, like the number 7. It only has two factors. Okay, then we've got improper fraction, and that's connected to mixed number. Well, an improper fraction is when you have the big number on the top, right? Because that's representing a mixed number, but in fraction form. And then a mixed number is when you have a whole number with a fraction. So like three and a half. Okay, and then fractions, we need to know these two terms, numerator and denominator. Here, 18 is the numerator, the number on top. And the bottom is the denominator, ND, numerator, denominator. Simplest form, that is when we can't break a number down, any a fraction down, any smaller. So like one-third, two-fifths, because they don't have any other greater, greatest, they don't have any greatest common factor except for the number one. And equivalent fractions are when we show that fractions are equal, like half is equal to four out of eight, or 10 out of 20, anything that's half, right? Okay, there we go. So let's see now. For four-sixths, four is the... Numerator, six is the denominator, good. One six, what is that showing me? Good, it's showing me simplest form. Two fifths and four tenths. Those are what? Good, those are equivalent fractions because two times two is four, five times two is 10. Next to it, we have 12 out of four. When the big number's on top, that makes it a improper fraction. What would the mixed number for this be? Do you guys remember how to figure that out? Well, 12 divided by 4 is 3. That would be the number it represents. Okay, 5 and 2, 6. We have a whole number and we have a fraction. That means it's a mixed number. All right, 4, 8, 10. Well, 4, I can divide by 1. I can divide by 4. I can divide by 2. 8 is also divisible by 2. 10 is even. So that makes those numbers composite. But now we have 3, 5, and 11. Well, 3, I can only divide by 1 and 3. 5 is only 1 and 5, and 11 is only 1 and 11. So those are prime, okay? All right, now they want examples of each of the following. What's, fa what's a factor pair? A factor pair is two factors that equal one product, right? So you can give me any two numbers and what they equal. So I'm going to go with 4 and 6 are factor pairs for 24. So you have to show me the pairs and what they equal. The greatest common factor, my G, C, F. That is a number that two numbers can be divided by, right? The greatest number. So if I have the numbers 4 and 10, well, I can divide 4 by 1 and 4 and 2. I could divide 10 by 1, 10, 2, and 5. What's the number, the greatest number they have in common? 2. So this, the GCF for those two numbers would be 2. Now we have least common multiple. That is the exact opposite pretty much because least is the opposite of greatest and multiple is the opposite of factor. So this is what, when you skip count by two numbers, what is the smallest number that they have in common? So let's go with 5 and... Mm, six. So if I skip count by five, I go five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay. When I skip count by 12, I go six, 12, 18, 24, 30. What's the smallest number they have in common? 30. So their LCM would equal 30. And then we have benchmark fractions. Those are just commonly used fractions that make it easy to compare in order. So like half, third, three-fourths, two-thirds, uh, one-fourth. can't write. Okay? 
Good. How are we feeling on that front page with the vocab? Let me know. All right. Now we've got our next page. Find factor pairs for each of the following numbers. Okay. So 52. I'm going to do it over here. Oh, it's not going to let me right over there. So I'm going to do it down here. Okay. So I can definitely do 1 and 52, right? It's even, so I know I can do 2 and 26. Good. 5 plus 2 is 7, so it's not divisible by 3, but it is divisible by 4, 4 and 13. So my answers here would be 1 and 52, 2 and 26, 4 and 13. And you just use division to figure that out. 36. Let's break it up over here. I can go 1 and 36. It's even, so I go 2 and 18. 3 plus 6 is 9, so it's divisible by 3. 3 and 12, good. 4 and 9 and 6 times 6. This is where your multiplication facts come in handy. So we write 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 6 and 6. And here we only have one spot, which means it is prime. So it's only divisible by 1 and itself, 23. Okay, moving right along. Tell whether each number is prime, composite, or neither. Zero. Does it have any factors? No, so it is neither. 31 can only be divided by 1 in itself. 31, so it is prime. 62 is even, so it is definitely composite. All right. Circle the two fractions that are equivalent for each set of fractions. Okay, we got 3 fourths, 9 twelfths, 2 sixths. Well, can I get 3 to 9? Yeah, by doing times 3, right? And 4 times 12 is 3, so those are. But I always want to check this one. 2 to 6 is times 3, but can I get from 2 to 9 or 2 to 3? No. So the two equivalent that you should circle are 3 fourths and 9 twelfths. Okay, number 13. This one we can kind of look at a couple things. So we have 4 and 4 here. If I have the same number on the top but different denominators, can they be equivalent? No, so they can't be related, equivalent. What about if I have the same denominator but different tops? Can they be equivalent? No, so that leaves me to look at these two. 4 times 10 is 40. 10 times 10 is 100, so 40 one-hundredths and 4 tenths are equivalent. Okay, now we have 3 fifths, 1 fourth, and 6 tenths. Well, can I get 3 to 5 from 3 to 5? No. What about 1 to 4? Yeah, I could do times 4. What about 6 to 10? No. So this one's probably not related to that one or that one because it doesn't have the same relate ratio here. But can I go 3 to 6? Yeah, by doing times 2. What about 5 to 10? Times 2. So 3 fifths is equivalent to 6 tenths. All right, re write each fraction in simplest form. If it is in simplest form, write simplest form. Well, 4 and 10, they are both even, so I know I can divide by 2. 4 divided by 2 is... 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 2 fifths is my simplest form. 3 and not 3 ninths. Can 3 go into 9? Yes, yeah, so that makes that my greatest common factor, so then I divide them both by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. That is my simplest form. And then can 3 go into 10? No. Does 3 have any other factors besides 1 in itself? No, because it's prime, so 3 tenths. It is in simplest form. All right. And then the bottom of this page, we're comparing five eighths compared to one third. Well, here I can use benchmark fractions with half. I know one third is less than half. And I know five eighths is more than half because four eighths is half. So five eighths is greater than one third. I could do the same thing here, comparing them with that half. One-fifth is definitely less, and four-sixth is greater than half because three-sixths is half. So one-fifth is less than four-sixths. I also know this one's closer to zero because it's only one out of five, whereas this one's closer to a whole because four out of six is pretty close to six out of six. Two-thirds and eight-twelfths. This one's harder. That's kind of close to a whole, and these are so big that I can't tell. So I need to find the least common multiple between 3 and 12. Well, if I skip count by 3, I go 3, 6, 9, 12. And so I only have to get it to 12. I don't have to do anything to this one. 2 times 4 is 8. 
Three times four is 12, so they are equal. Okay, let's move on. Mrs. Evans has 13 pictures to hang on a wall. Is there a way she can arrange the pictures in rows other than one times 13 or 13 times one so that the same number of pictures are in each row? So same number means equal rows and columns, so it's multiplication, right? Tell whether 13 is composite or prime. Well, can I divide 13 by anything other than one and 13? No, it is prime. So the answer is no, I can't because 13 is prime. Okay, number next one, 22. Two, there are two eighths of a cup of peanuts, one fourth of a cup of walnuts. Is there a greater amount of peanuts or walnuts? So I wanna compare two eighths to one fourth. Well, they're both so close to zero, so I need to find the least common multiple between four and eight. What is the least common multiple? It's very obvious. I can get four to eight good by doing times two. One times two is two. Oh, so that means they're equal. So they have, you need to tell me they have the same amount because they're equivalent. All right, now we have Mia has two whole bananas and one fifth of a second banana. Remember not to let that second banana confuse you. And you know what? That is a typo because it should be one fifth of a third banana. Look at that, see? Those cave dwellers make mistakes all the time because it should be two whole bananas and then one fifth of a third banana. I have really ugly bananas there. I would not buy those at the store and I only have one fifth of it. So it should show two and one fifth. Look at that typo. Okay, and then this one I will grade yours, but you're basically just telling me two fractions in a real world situation and then comparing them. So uh, let's say Bella ate four fifths of her apple. Joey ate hmm, two thirds of his apple. Who ate more? So that means I'm comparing four fifths and two thirds, they are both so close to a whole, so I need to get a least common multiple between five and 13. What's the least common multiple? 15. So two times five is 10, three times five is 15. Four times three is 12, five times three is 15. Which one's bigger? Four fifths, so Bella ate more. Okay, so you just needed to give me something like that, okay? And then we went through this page 552 review. I'll do one more example for you. So I would write two thirds. A picture of two thirds would be something broken into thirds and I show two thirds and then the numbers would be two thirds. And then that is equivalent. What do I wanna make it equivalent to? Let's multiply by six. So two times six is 12. Three times six is 18. I'm gonna regret that when I have to draw the picture, right? So then I would do 12 out of 18, so words. And then I would write, maybe it's I got two, four, six, eight, ten people. <laughs> two, four, five, and then make it. Okay. So twelve of these people have on hats. They don't. I'm not gonna draw that. Don't make me. And the out of the eighteen total. So that's a picture of twelve out of eighteen. And then I would just write twelve out of eighteen. Okay. And then to reflect, you would just be telling me that I know fractions are equivalent because I can do the same thing to the top and the bottom or they mean the same part of a whole, okay? They are equal. And you just talk to me about that, okay? And then you can talk to me about how you can use words like the word half. And then that in numbers is half. And it could show me something that shows half. So you can use words, pictures, numbers to describe fractions and equivalent fractions. 
Okay, guys? So now your job is to, you graded it with me, and now I want you to ask me any questions, ask me if you want to go over anything, and then once I hear from you, once I get a response, you can leave a comment on the video. Um, you can email me. You can send me a video. Once I hear from you, either way, whether you have questions or no questions, then I will send you the test. Okay? Bye, guys.